Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. We are continuing on the flower garden embroidery. So we got kind of that upper quadrant done and we are going to see how far we can get tonight. So last night we worked on French knots and lazy daisy or single chain stitches. And tonight I'm just gonna try and go cause I wanna get this uh, hopefully done by Friday. We got a little ways to go. So I'm gonna just full on stitch as fast as I can. So thank you guys for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. I'm here on both YouTube and Facebook. On YouTube, I'm at Penguin and Fish Movies and uh, Facebook at Penguin and Fish. So thank you guys for joining me and thanks for clicking like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. So again, we are working on the flower garden embroidery. Uh, we have it transferred. We've started stitching. I have my pattern. This is printed from the PDF pattern, the, the printable pattern that's available. So you can check that out. I have a link below. Uh, let's get going, you guys. Uh, it's been awesome too to see all of your your in progress work over in the penguin and fish crafters group on facebook too ah they are all looking so great uh so thanks so much for sharing you guys all right let's get going yep there's the ceiling there you go <laughs> all right here is where we left off last night so thanks again you guys for uh, stitching this with me. I sure appreciate it. So let's get this guy in the hoop. All right. Hello, everyone. I see you guys popping into uh, YouTube and uh, uh, Facebook. All right. So let's get this into the hoop here. I've been taking it out of the hoop. Um, I'm just trying to make that a little bit more of a habit. Uh, then it hopefully won't put like a permanent crease in my fabric, but I don't think it it will just for this little time that, that we're working on it. And I'll be getting this wet later to take off the stick and stitch stabilizer that I've been using that uh, sulky stick and stitch. This is where you just print it out, print the pattern out, and you can uh, stick it like a sticker right onto your fabric. And then you stitch through it and then uh, it comes off with water. So that's, that's um, my favorite way of um, transferring a design here. Okay. Oh, you're uh, Linda saying her needle gets full of glue from the stick and stitch. Um, it might be because it's getting more humid outside. Uh, you can just uh, wipe off the needle every once in a while. Um, and then it should be okay. It doesn't happen to me all the time, but uh, every once in a while it, it feels like it's getting a little gummed up. But I don't find that happening too much. Um, I would just, yeah, try and wipe it down a little a bit, wipe down the needle and see if that, uh, just occasionally, and see if that helps at all. All right, so I'm just weaving in the end. I'm gonna start this cardinal here. I'm gonna snip those little fuzzles at the end there. All righty. Oh, you're watching, Shirley's watching on YouTube. She missed last night. I'm happy you are getting to watch. Hey, Michelle. Michelle says it's her first time here. Happy to see you for sure. All right, you know what? I think I'm gonna start on his little wing here. Or should I? You know what? No, I'm gonna do the wing last. Let's let's start with, with the body. So I'm gonna just, uh, I'm doing the cardinal uh, and uh, I am going to do a back stitch for uh, the whole cardinal, except for his little eye is a French knot. 
basically anywhere that it's not that little bloop or a dot, I am going to do a back stitch. You can feel free to use um, kind of whatever stitch you like. I know some of you guys are experimenting with stitches uh, over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group and, and different colors, and it's just really, really fun to see all that. Just inspiring to see, you know, I, I love that just with the same design, you can get just so many different interpretations of it. So like I said, tonight I am just gonna try and cruise through and stitch. So I'm using the stabbing method of embroidery. And that's where I stab, stab it, the needle through the fabric, pull all the way up, and then stab back down, go all the way down, stab back up. So it's not really the fastest way to embroider, which maybe I should consider because because I want to go fast tonight. Um, but I like it. It it's it's just what I'm used to doing, and uh, um, I find that you can get really accurate. Like I can find this exact spot and go straight down right into that exact spot. Uh, the other method is the sewing method. And we did the sewing method a little bit last night when we were working on the clover here. Um, the sewing method is when you go in and out in the same motion. So for like the back stitch, I'd go in to that stitch and then start my next stitch all all with the needle like all at once so in and out all at once and then pull so in theory this can go you can get really quick at this this is a great um way to do it too if you're not using a hoop uh, it is pretty quick i you know i do have to say it is quick but i find that it's just when you're coming up on the side like this it's hard to get to be super accurate with where the needle goes uh it Unless you're using a really loose, like if your fabric is really loose in the hoop, um, it is a, a bit um, a bit more difficult difficult to be accurate. So I, I'm going to just continue with the stabbing motion, even though it might be a bit slower tonight. Even though I'm trying to go fast, I just I like it. So let me know, how do you guys do it? Do you do the stabbing method, like what I'm doing now, or do you do the sewing method where you go in and out with the needle all at once? Sometimes it depends on the stitch too. I mean, some stitches just work well, work better if you go the sewing method in and out uh, all at once. Like the stem stitch, we've done that before. Uh, not on this project, but um, those, uh, I like going in and out with that. Nora says she's a stabber. <laughs> oh, Gracie says, yeah, for like the stem, the stem stitch that going in and out on that, um, that, uh, that works great for the stem stitch. Uh, Tracy is asking, do you do a satin stitch in the wing? So a satin stitch is where we just kind of fill the whole space with a bunch of straight stitches. Um, I am not going to do that. You for sure can. I think that would be really pretty. It would really make that wing stand out uh, really boldly. Um, I am just doing outlines for for this really. So no satin stitch for me in this project. Although, um, who is it? Uh, a Genesis, I think stabbing is therapeutic. <laughs> That's funny. Gail's a stabber. Fun. <laughs> Stabbers. We're all very stabby here. Um, our Lois is mostly like I'm doing it here, which is stabbing. <laughs> Lana is a stabber. <laughs> Funny. Oh, geez. Uh, but yes, so there's, I think, who who's doing, is it, gosh, who's doing um, it in the group, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, someone in there is doing a satin stitch to fill in, gosh, are they filling in the whole tulip with satin stitches? Um, I did see someone doing satin stitch on, 
on their block, uh, not their block, their, uh, their embroidery. So I'd say uh, take a look in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group if you want to see an example of some satin stitch on, on this piece. You know, I'm tempted. I was thinking about this the other night, but it would be fun one of these times to like just pick an element from one of these designs, like like this bird, for example. It'd be fun to like just trace the bird and then uh, um, do the one part just like really intricate, like filled in all the way in a bunch of different colors and stuff that would be that would be fun like really get into and I, I just say like just one one character because to do this whole thing um really filled in and really ornate which would be just amazingly fun it would just take ages and ages <laughs> it would be turning this uh shortish uh embroidery project into like a really long you know, like month long project instead of just hopefully a week, week long, gosh, even probably more than a month. I know right when we started doing these lives, gosh, ages ago, years ago now, uh, I did a, I guess you could call it a portrait <laughs> of the plant that's behind me in, in my Facebook lives here back when it only had, um, like three leaves. And that I filled in the whole thing and made it really kind of um, like thread painting. And it was only like this big and it took, oh God, it took ages and ages and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Don't know what a sewer is just, oh yeah. So the sewing method, so this is the stabbing method where I just go all the way down and all the way back up. Um, I'll show you, I'm going to do this, uh, the watering can next. I'm kind of out of stitches to show you the sewing method now, um, with this bird, but I will show you the sewing method. So there's, there's basically like those two styles of embroidery techniques. Um, I have a hunch that quilters like if you've done a lot of a lot of uh like hand quilting i have a hunch that you probably like using the sewing method um for embroidery just because it's kind of a very similar motion to to hand quilting all right let's get his little beak and eye before moving on to uh the watering can i keep wanting to say flower pot i guess it's being used as a flower pot all right, I have uh, some tan here. So the eye and the beak are the tan color. So I'm gonna get my three strands out of here. Haven't used this color yet. I think it's just his eyes, the little chipmunk, and this like black-eyed Susan or, or Daisy. Um, that little center area is, is this tan or brown. All right, let's get those three strands together. Thanks, Kathy. Kathy is uh, saying on YouTube that it's looking good. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're trying to cruise along here. And we're almost done with that cardinal already, and we're only like 15 minutes in. So that makes me think that uh, our yield will be good <laughs> for the rest of uh, the progress of this. All right thread the needle there. Okay, I'm going to weave in the ends to the back of that cardinal. Uh, you know, I keep saying weave into the ends. If you haven't been here yet, I, I, I don't tie knots on the back of my embroidery. I weave in the ends each time. So I don't have any knots on the back of this embroidery. It's perfectly flat. And I mean, it looks almost as nice as the front, I think. It just by not having the knots and weaving in the ends, it, it just really is conducive to having a, a nice clean, clean back, I think. And I, and I'm trimming 
the little ends. The other thing about trimming the ends is that if you stitch nearby one of those ends, you won't be pulling it to the front because you don't have like dangly little ends everywhere. Okay. His beak is super little, so I think let's do the little, um, we'll do his little mouth first. I think we'll do that in two stitches just so I can get a, like a semblance of a little smile in there. I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, I could have probably just gone across in one stitch and have it be just fine. Oh, Gracie, yes, yeah, so this is available as a printable pattern. So it is a PDF uh, pattern that you download. <laughs> there, that's kind of like a little smile, almost. Uh, and you can trace it. I kind of show how to do that in our first video for this. And um, you can also use like this stick and stitch, which is uh, which is what I'm sticking stitching through this kind of goofy other looking fabric thing here. It's a, a sticker, an embroidery stabilizer that you can print directly to. And it also acts like a sticker. It's sticky on one side. Oh, so Grace is saying that she's used to the stabbing method because she she does a lot of counted cross stitch. Well, that makes sense. That that is like enlightening to me because I when I was little I did a ton of counted cross stitch before I did any embroidery. I suppose it's a type of embroidery, but I did a ton of counted co cross stitch. And you're right, for counted cross stitch, you are using the stabbing method. You're stabbing um, through the fabric and coming back up, um, you're not weaving in and out in one motion. So that's probably why I feel like it's normal and the most comfortable for me. All right, we are done with that little, oh, you guys, <laughs> I, I got yammering and uh, um, forgot to do his little eye. So now I got to go back. I got to weave in these ends again that I just did and do the little French knot for the eye. Ah, sheesh. Well, that'll waste some time. Boo. All right. So I'm just weaving in the ends again because I forgot to do one tiny stitch. So I got to go back and forth three times. It's that third time that kind of locks it in place. All right, now let's do that French knot here. So I'm coming up on one side of that dot, holding the needle away from the fabric or hold, hold the uh, thread in your left hand and point the needle to, to your left hand. I like that uh, way of doing it. And then around twice, hold those loops. I'm poking in on the opposite side of that dot in the pattern for the eye and holding the stitches there with my thumb in. There we go. <laughs> so a little French knot. If I would have forgotten that and taken the stick and stitch off, we, uh, we'd be without an eye, which actually probably would look kind of nice. Maybe it'd look classier without, without that little dot for an eye. I don't know. <laughs> Nora says she's never done cross stitch. She's just a stabby person. <laughs> ah. What do I, okay. Michelle's asking what I printed, printed this on. So I'm going to show you guys it again. It is, it is this, uh, this, um, material called stick and stitch it is by Selkie. Selkie's the brand name and it's stick and stitch. It comes in like an eight and a half by 11 sheet, which is perfect to stick in your printer. So here you go. You can put it in an inkjet or a laser printer. I'm actually using a laser printer, a black and white laser printer, and it works fine. Then you stitch right through it and it comes out in water. So what I'm trying to do is get this done because I want to show you how it comes off in, in the water. So I'm trying to cruise through it so I can show you that uh, hopefully Friday at some point. All right, I'm moving on to this whole uh, grow section, the, um, 
watering can. And uh, that is with this blue. Oh, uh, Tic Tac Foe is saying Red Wing Blackbird, Cardinal, Blue Jay. I did mine as a Cardinal. I was thinking about, about this before coming on today. It could, it would definitely easily be a Blue Jay. I was thinking it could, you could even get away with making him a, uh, a woodpecker too, I think. Um, you could do like his head red and the rest of him black. Then it would look like a, a woodpecker. I don't know. What other bird has that little crest on his head? Do I sell it? Oh, yes. So you guys, I do sell the stick and stitch. It is in the penguin and fish shop. So if you go to penguin, A-N-D, fish it will be in the supplies section. I, and I do have some left. My supplies are getting low, you guys. I am not happy about it, but uh, with all this COVID stuff, things are not arriving very quickly. But I do have some tea towels on order and more of the uh, water-soluble markers on order. I'm hoping to get um, more cute little scissors on order. Uh, so if, if there is anything that you'd like to see in the shop, I'm going to be putting some more floss up there and some fabric uh, coming up soon. Um, oh, I know some people mentioned like a thread minder. Uh, a thread minder, or not a thread, well, yeah, a thread minder. Those are those cute little um, magnets that you can put on your piece because then uh, you're, you can set your needle somewhere while you're like switching threads and stuff. But I, well, I was meaning to say a, a threader, a needle threader, not a thread minder. <laughs> but I know some, somebody wanted that. So I'm looking into all those things. I'd like, uh, I'd like to have, be able to have whatever supplies you want in there. So if there is something that you guys are specifically looking for, let me know and I will try and get my hands on it. Although things, like I said, are Taking a bit longer to ship than usual. Uh, Rebecca's asking if I ever do satin stitch. And yes, I for sure, um, I, I do. I think I'm going to start, let's start with this. Well, where should I start? So I, I do kind of like mapping, mapping things out before I get going. Um, I was thinking I'd start by going out here, but then I'd end up. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how I can start here, do all of this, and then end up down here. Um, but I don't know. Let's just let's just get started. I'm just gonna start stitching out this way, and I won't map it completely out. Um, I do do satin stitch. Um, I don't do it all the time because uh, it takes a long it, it takes time. I suppose that's the shortest answer. Um, but I do have it in a few of, actually a, a quite a bit of my, um, my embroidery patterns and kits have it. I, I typically only do satin stitch if it's small little areas. Like for example, this uh, little dragonfly body, that would have been a typical place that I may have done um, satin stitch. I probably wouldn't have done something like the bird. I probably wouldn't have filled him in with satin stitch ever. I usually choose like smaller areas than that. If it does get, you know, a bit bigger than, than that dragonfly, then sometimes I will switch to a short and long stitch. Um, that, that gives you a similar effect of filling in a space, but um, it, it does it with smaller stitches, so you're not doing like these big stitches. Um, we'll we'll do, I'll do a demo here sometime. We'll go through a bunch of different stitches, and actually, we could spend. This would be kind of fun. We could spend a week just doing s different stitches. So like the first day, we could do stitches that you typically use for uh, outlining things. And then we could do stitches that you typically use for filling in shapes. Uh, and then we could do like some decorative, you know, dots, different ways of doing like these French knots. There's like a colonial knot. We could just go over some of those 
And there's actually some ways to fancy up normal stitches. Uh, like for example, with this back stitch, we can actually weave in another uh, stitch after we've done the back stitch and it looks really kind of cool. So uh, most of my kits are, and, uh, and patterns are very simple like this. Uh, so a beginner can do them uh, pretty easily, but any of these designs, all of these like line art designs, you really could play around with some fancy stitches. So I like that idea. Let's one of these days I will um, I will take one of one of these patterns, so something like this, and we'll adapt it. We will try a whole pile of different stitches with it. I, I think that'd be fun. Something basic, like it, it, it could be just a simple pattern that was a, just an outline, but we can really play around with what we do with that. I think that'll be fun. So we could actually do the same pattern in a few different ways too. That would be, that'd be interesting. All right, I like that idea. Um, I'm going to put that in my head <laughs> and figure out how, how we might do something like that. All right, so I'm just kind of, I have no real rhyme or reason of where I'm going yet. I do kind of like doing things that are behind other things first. So I'm leaving this line on kind of the main piece here until after I've done with all, I'm done with all this. Cause this all seems like it's further back. I'm going to run out of floss way before then though. I'm realizing now. All right. I'm going to hit these uh, four French knots here. Oh, totally, Rebecca. Yeah, you could add seed beads to a few stitches. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe we get real fancy. We talked about that a little bit last night about, you know, stitching with some beads or putting some sequins on or even like some ribbon stitching. We should just get real wacky with one of these. Just uh, how to take how to take a simple embroidery design and uh, bling it all out <laughs> with with fancy stitches, uh, fancy add-ons. That would just be a silly and fun project, I think. Yeah, we might have to do that. Uh, maybe for one of these embroidery of the months, we'll take a design that I already have done. So like something that's already in the shop and we will just full on adapt that and then maybe yeah, maybe I'll put together like a stitch guide or something for it. Um, that'd be kind of fun. A little break from new designs and just take a take a different um, an existing design and totally make it crazy. All right, what to do now? I think I'm going to try and stitch all these little lines. All right, so I could do these like one long stitch if I want, but I think I think I'm going to just continue doing these back stitches uh, versus um, versus one long stitch. Maybe this first one will do one long stitch, but then the rest let's do a couple. Just because I don't want to turn them into toe catchers where I can get a finger in there. Oh, Catherine's saying maybe the unicorn. That would be a fun one to add sparkly stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah, Terry says we could add pom-poms. Oh, dang, yeah, now we're getting fancy. Get all the crazy stuff going on with it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to plan it out. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Tic Tac Fo. Tic Tac Fo just uh, uh, tipped me over on um, <laughs> over on YouTube. That's one of YouTube's crazy new features. Uh, he says I support blinging things out. That's nice. That's also my brother. <laughs> Uh, also, I don't know how YouTube chat works. <laughs> well, it looks like you're doing it. Funny. Isn't he nice? Uh, that's, uh, that's my brother on Tic Tac Foe over on YouTube right now. And, and he helped me get all this new computer system all figured out and put together. He is over on Twitch doing stuff. So if you are on Twitch, which I'd still love to do some um, 
live videos on Twitch. I might start doing that on, on um, weekends coming up, uh, heading over to Twitch. Uh, but I think that's just kind of a neat platform, too. And they have a whole crafting section now. Uh, if you guys don't know what Twitch is, it's kind of, um, it's like a, I guess, a gaming platform. It kind of like, you know, anyone, any other social media with video, but for um, live streaming. And it's mostly like video game stuff, but they do, it can be anything too. They have a whole crafting section of people just doing fun, just making stuff, just making fun stuff. Uh, a few years ago, they had a Bob Ross marathon and everyone would just be watching old Bob Ross videos. It was awesome. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to explore that a little bit more. But yeah. Oh, yeah. So Bonnie, so that's what Twitch is. It's a little like for me, it's a little overwhelming right when you get there. But I think... It would be a kind of a fun thing, fun thing to do too. All right, I am totally out of thread here. And actually this is gonna work perfectly for mapping out my area. It's a perfect time to run out of thread because remember I wanted to figure out a way to do all this, but end up, you know, being able to stitch this without like making a big jump on the back. And I'm, I'm ending up running out of th floss right here so I will be able to start right here, finish this line, then do this diagonal and then this inner line here, and I'll be almost right back to the start. And then I can do uh, the rest of this here, get the little guy and then, then do the grow on the inside there. So um, I'm really happy with where, where my floss ended up. <laughs> as far as mapping, mapping my root. So again, I'm just weaving in the ends here. All right, and we will snip that. All right, let's grab more blue. I'm definitely going to need to cut more blue after this, I think, because this uh, watering can is using a lot of blue up. All right, let's do that. Yeah, so uh, I know some of you guys are wondering about Twitch, and, uh, and I got to tell you, I am very new to it. I, I have a page created, but that's about it. I know we talked about it a few years ago, probably now, um, about trying, trying, um, trying Twitch out for our live thing. Um, I think that was before there was YouTube live really. Uh, but I think it, it probably, I, I would say it probably skews younger and it actually probably skews Ugh, yeah, I don't know. I was gonna say it probably skews a little bit male too, but I'm not. I'm not sure if that's actually true. Uh, it is. It started out mainly as a gaming platform, um, so you know, like video games that people stream. Um, they're like live playing video games, and then people watch them, <laughs> which still sounds. Uh, crazy if that's not your thing but it is so entertaining it is just crazy entertaining but they have over the past um in the past like a, a year or two ago it's got to be at least two years now they started a whole other section of the site i mean like a category they have you know different categories uh and one of the categories is is crafting so now a lot of people, I mean, you know, you could just watch people craft and they make the most amazing things. Like there was one guy that was doing like metal casting. And I know there was, I watched another um, person just sewing and uh, she was sewing like this, this costume and it was amazing. 
and it, you know she had cameras everywhere so you could see uh you could see her sew and you could see her designs you could see her where her pressing area was you could see you know where her cat was on the cat cam it is just entertaining <laughs> but it is live streaming so that's that's the big thing with it it is it is live streaming mostly gaming and if you go there i mean it looks gaming e like you know everything's black with like you know red lasers and that sort of thing like that's that sort of look <laughs> um but the crafting stuff it's kind of mesmerizing a little bit um, so it's, but it's like anything else you can follow people that you like and, um, that whole thing. It's just, it's just another way. It's another platform for live streaming, but it, it is pretty entertaining. And my, uh, my brother has a show on there and it's, it's, it's genuinely entertaining. <laughs> okay. But why watch? Gretchen is saying... <laughs> My guess is that someone would ask you the same question of why are you watching someone embroider <laughs> right now? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's kind of the same thing. You, you watch, oh, you mean at least here we do this together? That's true. But I mean, the same thing is there with, with the video games. Like if they're playing a video game that you are like way into and then, then you learn like some special room that they went to or some trick that they used that's something that you can use um when you play yourself too later like it, it, you, you just learn and you know you can hang out and chat with people and everything uh too and then with the crafting area of it then it's a whole lot like this uh where you get to see what they're working on and you know you can chat with them and you can talk uh, to other people there so it's very similar to actually what we're doing now as far as the crafting crafting area oh rebecca's made lots of masks using the method oh that is so great to hear i'm so happy to hear that um that that's going awesome uh rebecca yay that's awesome that's just great yeah my um other brother <laughs> I have two brothers. Uh, one is a tic tac foe in the chat here, and, and the other one is the one sewing masks. And I do have a whole pile of masks from him, so I will be getting those up in the shop, hopefully by the end of the weekend. And you guys, I do have more of those filthy filters that you can put into the masks. Uh, I think I'm actually going to include them with the masks and then um, you'll be able to get extra. So I'm, I'm putting that together. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I'm really, really hoping I can get through all that um, this weekend and get them up. I might actually put them up in Etsy as well. So I will send, regardless whatever I do with that, I will send out an email uh, to you guys so you can snag one of them to snag um, the filters, those filthy uh, filters that you can put in the mask. Um, or if you just want one of my brother's masks that are awesome that uh, my husband is, that's the kind that he wears. Is filthy washable? Nope, Barbara, you can you can wash them. Oh, well, yes, <laughs> I didn't finish what you said. Uh, Barbara is saying, is the filthy washable or do you have to use, or do you use them once? And my no was for the use them once. You can wash them. Um, it's basically like, Filthy, they are a company that makes like filters for like your home furnace, basically. And then the, the fabric that they used, they've adapted it now for, for these face masks. Um, so now the, what they make these filters out of, they're now just selling it as, as yardage, basically. So you can actually get some of your own too, if you want. They come in like really big, weird sheets. Um, but it's filthy, F-I-L-T-I dot com. Um, we've gotten a whole pile of it and we've cut it down to size so it fits perfectly in the masks already. Um, and yes, they are washable. I, They're washable, but I would think about them. I mean, you know, we're still trying to 
protect ourselves with these, right? So, I mean, if you're washing them uh, just a ton of times and they, they look a little worn out or whatever, then I would think it's time for, for a new one. Kind of like a t-shirt that you wash a bunch of time. It, it gets like stretched out and just used. So I would err on the, you, you can wash them. I just throw them in with the, in the washing machine with, with the mask. Um, and then I just put it back in the mask when I'm done. And that seems to be fine so far. But yeah, if I, if I, if it starts to seem like it's wearing, then it's, then it's time for a new one. Oh, you ordered, uh, oh, you ordered the HEPA filters for the mask on Amazon. Yep, that's a good idea, Luan. I've, I've heard that those, or Luan, is it Luan or Luan? Uh, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I've heard that those HEPA filters are good too. So the thing with the filthy, I'm going to just end this floss here because I don't have too much left. And, you know, it's kind of a good time to stop with this floss because I have to jump past this chipmunk. But if I end it here, I could actually start back up here and avoid the chipmunk altogether. And, and that's what I'm going to try and do. And, you know, I barely have any thread left, so might as well just stop it now. Uh, but with the filthy filters, I think versus the HEPA filters, the filthy filters are really breathable. It's actually kind of like, like batting. It's almost as if you put a little piece of batting um, in in uh, your mask, except for that it's an actual filter um, meant to filter things <laughs> really well. Uh, so, I, I mean, I'm liking it so far. Obviously, can't guarantee any medical anything with any of these things. Um, you know, you can't make any of those claims for sure, but they do have more information um, about the science of it all on the filthy uh, filthy website. So I encourage you to check that out. Oh, Luann. Oh, okay, so it's... Oh, I... Luann. Okay, Luann. Unless I'm just still getting it wrong. <laughs> All right. For now, it's Luann until you tell me differently. All right. Uh, let's get three... Three... <clears throat> more little threads here. All right, get them together. How are we doing? Oh, we got a good 15 minutes yet. I think we can definitely finish up this uh, watering can. That's where, that at minimum is where I was hoping to get tonight. I mean, we have the text in it still. That'll take some time. I would love to be able to get all that done and maybe even get this little dude started um, before the evening is up. Because remember, I am trying to finish this as quickly as possible so I can um, take the, so I can show you guys how to take that stick and stitch stabilizer off. Oh, I got it. Okay, so it is Luann. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Sometimes when uh, uh, people write how they pronounce their name, I still feel like, oh, I, I still feel like I'm getting that wrong. Okay, good. I will remember. All right, let's get the top of this guy. I suspect I'll need a new I'll thread before I can finish all of this text. But yeah, so I'm trying to get this done. So by Friday, at some point, we can take off the stick and stitch. That actually won't take very long. I think, um, I don't know, with about, let's, let's call it 15 minutes. 15 minutes from start to ironed. I think we can get this uh, the stick and stitch off. So we have a full day tomorrow to get as far on this as possible. And then maybe 45 minutes or so on Friday. So I still feel like based on what we're getting done, I still gotta go in cruise mode, try and, try and do this as quick as I can. Actually, you know what? I would love to get this watering can done and then maybe jump up here and get this little drain flies wings because then that's that's it for the blue. There's nothing else that's blue in the design. I'm just rotating so it's uh, easier to hold again. Um, I keep 
I keep moving the piece around so that, that I can feel the back with my fingers. Ugh, look how cute the back is. It's always exciting when the back looks nice and clean. <laughs> Not that it's necessary, but again, it's mostly uh, just from... I, I like the, black, the back clean so my thread isn't catching on knots all the time. Let's go around. I'm going to come around the outside and then come back on the inside. And then we just have a few more stitches. Oh, and then the whole, the text. So you could, you could really put whatever text you want in here. Um, if you are using the stick and stitch and, and you want different text, I would just cut this out and then it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't be there. And then you could write in pencil or a water soluble marker. You could, I would first write what you want on a piece of paper and then trace it just so you can place it in just the right spot. Um, but yeah, you could, you could write or, or write nothing really. I could just leave the grow on here, but not stitch it. And then when I take the, um, when I um, take the stick and stitch off later, uh, it would go away. So that's, that's another option if you don't want any text. All right, I think I might have just enough thread to get back around this way, or maybe to actually finish the um, finish the outside of the watering can, and then I still gotta do that text. I'm trying to get everything blue done tonight. That'd be good. Still trying to cruise. Oh, you guys, we had an 80 degree day here. It is our first 80 degree day. Ah, kind of amazing. Although we went for a walk for the first time in a while in that 80 degree weather too. And holy cow, did that wipe both of us out. I have been so groggy this afternoon. And I think it's just because it's actually warm uh, all of a sudden but it's nice, nice, nice. All right, last stitch on the outside. Then we'll get the inside of the stem. So right now, um, my needle is getting a little sticky um, from this stick and stitch. Uh, so I might wipe it off with a paper towel a bit later. I suspect it is when it's humid um and it's not the end of the world i mean it's not going anywhere it's just a, a slightly annoying but it's not like impinging on my progress or anything like that um but uh, but it, it's it's definitely more humid than usual we haven't turned on any air conditioning or anything like that yet uh so I'm thinking uh, humidity has a little bit to do with it, but it would never like it wouldn't get to the point that this would just melt away or anything like that. You're gonna be fine, but yeah, my needle is uh, it is feeling it a little bit here. Maybe when I'm done with this floss, I'm I'm gonna be out again soon. I will just try and wipe it on my fabric, like a corner of the fabric, and see if that helps at all. Yeah, thanks for uh, talking about the uh, face mask, Rebecca. I'm telling Barbara how, how it works. Yeah, so I do, I did uh, the, the the one face mask tutorial, and then we tested out a way to do it super quickly. And that worked really well too. And that's actually how my brother has been making them, but he's, he's making them a different size. He's making them extra tall. Um, so, so they start out the same size, but you know, they have the pleats in. So when you undo the pleats or expand the pleats, that's a good way of saying it. When you expand the pleats, it ends up being a lot bigger and that's, awesome because then it fits for 
you know, a small person or a big person, because uh, you don't have to stretch it out all the way. You can just stretch it however far you want. And then um, it also works for, like, my husband who wants his, who's got, like, a tall face, and so it, it, it works for him as well. But yeah, I think he, instead of his, and ooh, did I, oh, I lost a thread here. <sighs> instead of doing his, so it ends up six inches tall, he did his, I, I believe he did it nine inches tall. So instead of having your piece be nine by six, he did it nine by nine. Um, yeah, so that's what he did for his, and, and I think they turned out really great. Oh, and the ones that we have, the new ones that we'll be putting in the shop, they're all solid colors, too. And we even have black ones. I know black, black's been difficult to find. I sent him all of my black fabric that I had at home here and, uh, and some, a few other colors, and he stitched them all up. All right, I have just enough thread for this. Uh, we will still try and do this grow in the center here. I think we might have just enough time to finish that. I don't know. This is going to be, this might be a little tough to get done by Friday. So I'm just going to say it now. Friday, we may be going a bit long here. So if we're here for <laughs> one and a half hours or even a little bit longer on Friday, if you want to spend your Friday night with me, <laughs> I might just try and finish this guy up. But who knows, maybe it will go a little bit faster and... I'll be pleasantly surprised that we get it done. Oh geez, Christy's saying that he had to, she had to make a, her fiance a special mask to fit his massive beard. <laughs> I was kind of wondering, so my brother had a pretty good beard going and uh, um, I think he shaved it for the purpose of his face mask. Oh, <laughs> uh, Justin, my brother, Tic Tac Foe. Oh, maybe I shouldn't reveal his identity. <laughs> uh, but Tic Tac Foe, my brother, um, he says a 24 hour cast confirmed. <laughs> Don't think I said 24 hour cast. Although we did do that like eight hour, or gosh, it was at least a seven hour uh Periscope. Do you remember Periscope? Uh, like four years ago, whenever all this live video stuff started, we did do a long um, quilt session. That was for the Splendid Sampler uh, quilt along, the first one, where I was getting way behind. That was when they were releasing blocks. Like, weren't they doing like five new blocks a week or something crazy? And uh, there was no way I was getting those blocks done. So I... I did a catch-up day where, where I was just on for like seven hours <laughs> with a couple of little breaks, but still streaming just to get caught up on some blocks. That was a long time ago. Um, oh, Gretchen saying, do you say I have floss in stock? I don't quite yet, but soon... Oh gosh, maybe we could get that done this weekend too. We will see. <laughs> I do have, I do have floss and fabric, fabric like this, and also that um, unbleached muslin uh, that I use sometimes too. I have both of those at the office right now, um, ready to get online. So they exist. They don't exist in the shop quite yet, uh, but I will have have more more floss available soon. I know that we've been out of stock on, on that for a while. Everything is a little touchy to get right now. Uh, but yeah, so I do have floss and fabric available soon. And I and I am trying to I'm there's I'm I'm not waiting on it or anything like that. I just I've just been super duper swamped. So <laughs> uh, I think I'll be a little less swamped this weekend. So uh, hopefully I can get that up. We'll for sure get the face masks up and, and hopefully I can get the the floss and fabric figured out soon here too. 
But yeah, it's coming. Coming, coming, coming. That's a pretty W. It's goofy stitching, stitching the words backwards, but it was just easy to weave in right there. And then I'm just, you know, following, following the line. But yeah, and like I said, I'm, I'm actively making decisions on, um, actively making decisions on what more supply type items you'd like in the, like in the shop. So like floss and fabric and, you know, tea towels, scissors, thread, needle minders, thread, uh, no, I forgot what they're called already. To get the thread in the eye of the needle. <laughs> needle threaders. Needle threaders and needle minders, right? <laughs> uh, some water-soluble pens, uh, you know, little cute carrying cases and stuff. So if there is anything, anything else um, you would like to see, like some supply that you really just, is hard to find or, you know, you'd like to get all in one spot, let me know. Oh yeah, uh, needles. I want to get um, some larger packs of needles up, like a 12 pack of needles. I'd like to do that. Um, Luann, this color blue, I believe this, this particular exact blue that I'm using is, uh, it's a DMC floss and I believe it's 799. That is literally off of the top of my head, but let's, let's look. In the pattern I did put, um, I do have a list of the DMC equivalents if you did want to do the exact colors here. Yeah, here we go. It's DMC 799. So here, here are the colors right here if you wanted to just like screen grab that. Um, it is in the pattern, uh, so the pattern will have that listed. But again, if you have floss on hand, use whatever you got. Ooh, weird. Gosh, I hope we have enough thread to, to finish this. I feel like I've gotten pretty good at floss chicken <laughs> over the years of, of embroidering. Um, and what I mean by floss chicken is being able to run out of floss without, you know, having like three stitches remaining or something. Uh, sometimes if I see that I'm running out of thread, I'll sometimes make my stitches a little bit bigger or like how I did uh, two nights ago with this back stitch doing, you know, a back stitch, then a forward stitch, then a back stitch, then a forward stitch. Um, it gives you the same kind of look. It uses a little less thread. So here I'll do that, do that now. Um, so I'm going to do a forward stitch. So I'm still moving along my line, but in a forward motion. And then I'm going to do a back stitch where I'm going backwards a stitch. And now instead of coming a stitch forward, like a next back stitch, I'm going to come up right in the spot um, at the beginning of that back stitch. This I feel like undoes the, the stitch before a little, a little bit. So I don't, I don't use this often. Um, but there I'm doing a forward stitch now, no, then a normal back stitch. I do use this if I feel like I'm going to run out of thread though. And actually my thread's looking pretty good now that I, Look at it, so back and then forward. And I think we'll do the rest back stitch. If I get if I get to this circle area of the G and it's not looking good, <laughs> then I will um I'll do this back and forward again. Oh gosh, Gretchen. Oh man. Carol Baskin. <laughs> Last month, uh, one uh, I, did, I did a special embroidery of the month with a, a tiger on it because we were watching Tiger King. So we had like two, two embroidery of the months last month. We have three floss bucket, uh, floss uh, boxes full. Marlene says so she has three floss boxes full, and it seems like it always manages to. Find one that you don't have. Uh, <laughs> there's always that color that you don't have. Uh. <laughs> Fun 
funny how that happens. Alrighty, we are almost done with this grow. And speaking of grow, I wanted to thank you guys for your likes and subscribes. You guys are so sweet. And I love um, hanging out with you guys here in the evening. Best part of the day, getting to hang out and craft and chit chat with you guys. All right, almost done here. You never tried embroidery stitching before. Do you do all the stitches in a back stitch? Bonnie, nope, you do not have to, but it is a great place to start. Uh, so Bonnie's saying she's never tried uh, on YouTube, never tried embroidery stitching before. Do you, do you do all the stitches in a back stitch? You absolutely do not have to. I think it is a, I think it's a pretty stitch um it looks like beady like you can see each stitch so the light hits it cute i just think it kind of screams embroidery uh it is a nice place to start um stitching because all you have to do is follow the line uh, we did some french knots in here and then here are some single chain stitches so so i try and keep my patterns uh pretty simple um, so a beginner could do them. There's just a couple stitches in each one. There's always more than one stitch, so you can learn more than one stitch. Uh, but there are tons and tons of stitches. And there's always more to learn. Um, but you can be as intricate in the stitches or as simple as you want, um, even in the same embroidery. So right now I'm doing a lot of back stitches. I'm just, I'm just tracing the shapes, but you can actually fill in the shapes with stitches. Uh, there's, there's so much opportunity for creativity and experimenting and color and texture. Uh, it, it really is a fun medium. But that being said, you don't have to let all that stuff scare you either. Like all the options are sometimes scary, right? <laughs> uh, you can just outline it like what we're doing here. You could even outline it all in one color and that would be really pretty. That's actually a style of embroidery, doing it all one color. Um, a common one is red work. Oh, you guys, I didn't have enough, I didn't have enough uh, thread to do his little blue wings, but you know what? Yeah, oh, gosh, I gotta cut a whole new piece of thread. I oh, we're a little we're a little over time tonight, but I do want to finish all the blue. So I'm gonna get this guy's little wings yet. Um, probably don't need too much floss for that. Although those lazy daisy stitches, they do take a lot of floss. Let's let's do the wings, and then we'll call it an evening. But I'm happy to get um, that was a pretty big chunk done tonight. Um, I'm happy to get the, the, the blue all done and that little birdie. So tomorrow let's try and get this little chipmunk done. And I don't know, We're, we got to work our way back up this way. So maybe we do some of these stems and leaves and then get this, this guy. So let's, let's hope that we can do from here like this guy to here tomorrow at least. Ugh, but we really need to get more done than that if we're going to get done on Friday, don't we? So let's let's see if we can cruise through this much tomorrow. All of these leaves and uh, or flowers and then this guy there. That might be asking <laughs> asking a little much, but uh I don't know. Maybe if we add on a few minutes tomorrow and a few more minutes on Friday, we will have this this guy done. Just like we're doing tonight. We're adding a few more minutes. Get a little bit more out of it. What I'm doing now is I just want to get his four little wings here. Little dragonfly feller. So I'm going to weave in the back of his body here. Just grabbing as many threads as I can. Oh, what time tomorrow? So Bonnie, it will be... 8.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So the same time as it 
as it is tonight. So 8, 8.30 Central. Uh, if you click the notification button, so if you click the on YouTube, if you click the red subscribe button and then the bell, uh, the bell is the notification button and that it'll send you an email. So you'll probably get an email about, I don't know, 20 minutes to half an hour before I go on just to say that in 20 minutes it'll be on. <laughs> and uh, then I think you'll probably get another email that says it's live. Uh, but it is, or you can just come to YouTube at, uh, or Facebook at 8.30 p.m. Central. So I, I'm in Central time here. I'm in, in the Minneapolis area. Oh, you missed the part of the flowers and leaves, Bonnie. Okay, well, all of the, the live videos are staying on YouTube, so they'll... You can watch the ones from the previous evenings. They're up now. But if you don't want to deal with all that, we do have a bunch of those Lazy Daisy stitches, the single crochets, single <laughs> single chain stitches, I mean, uh, and these little dots, and all these dots are French knots. So we will, we will go over those again tomorrow for sure. And right now I'm, I'm doing those single chain stitches or lazy daisy stitches. These are kind of big ones. I'm just trying to shape them a little bit. They look like little teardrops. So I'm coming up at the, the point of them. So there's a point and then it's like a teardrop shape. So I'm coming up at the point and then I'm making that teardrop shape with my thread, just kind of around the shape here. And then I'm going back in to that same point so I've made kind of like a loop here, like a circle. And before I pull too far, I'm gonna come back up at that bottom of that, that teardrop. And I'm, I'm right in the middle of that circle now. So that now when I pull, it's gonna, oops, see now I got caught on that French knot there. Uh, but as I pull, it's going to catch that loop on this thread. So we have like this cute little teardrop shape and then I have to tack it down. So I'm just putting a tiny little stitch on the other side of that loop. And then that, that holds it in place. So that's the single chain stitch. That's what we did for all of these leaves and these little clover blossomy fellers. And um, it's what I'm doing for the wings here too. And I'm glad I got as much floss as I did because <laughs> those wings took up a ton of floss. I'm almost out of floss just uh, with those four wings, that's crazy. Those uh, single chain stitches do, do take up quite a bit of floss. All right, so now I'm gonna just weave in the ends again so I don't have any of those knots on the back. But did you see when I was stitching this how it got caught on one of these French knots? That is exactly why I don't like having knots anywhere on the back of my piece because you could be stitching along, catch one of those knots and not even know it. And then all of a sudden you got like a big loop on the back of your piece and uh, from like 800 stitches ago that you didn't notice. Um, but that is the exact reason. And, and typically I uh, oftentimes I'll leave all the French knots till the end, but we're kind of working the colors as we go so it'd be weird to pop back in with all these french knots so i'm kind of doing it as i go but hey i would say we got a good half of this done now yeah i'm calling it calling it a good half <laughs> all right i'm gonna take it out again for the evening uh just again so it's uh hopefully um you know it, it helps so you don't have a crease. Like if, if I would forget that I'm working on this for like a year, <laughs> which has happened, you start a project and then, then you don't. If you, um, if you have left it in that hoop that whole time, you might have like a permanent crease here. This will come out just fine. Uh, I'm just trying to get in the habit of taking it out of the hoop when I'm not working on it. But there we are, you guys. All right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. All right. Hello. Hello again. So thanks again, everyone, for joining me here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page and the Penguin and Fish Movies YouTube page. Uh, here we are. 
that's a good halfway, I'd say. So uh, it'll be fun. Tomorrow we'll get get him in, and I think we'll get this, like, daisy in, and that's a yellow color. I'm going to just grab the pattern here. Yeah, so that'll be uh, this fun, bright yellow. So we will get some... Uh, uh, some new colors in tomorrow, some colors we haven't used too much yet. We use the tan just for his little beak, so we'll get all that tan in, and we'll even have his nose is pink, so that'll be a new color that we haven't used yet. That's just for the, the peony really up there. Uh, so yay, so this pattern is available. Uh, we will be working on this tomorrow and Friday, yet uh, we've been working on it for the week, so if you download the pattern now, there's definitely time to get caught up where we are, and uh, then you can come stitch with us. Uh, I'm having fun. <laughs> it's fun chatting with you guys as well. So thank you guys again, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.